Hey guys, welcome back to another video. We are gonna do something a little differently today. I have a small haul and then we also have a tutorial. So make sure you stay tuned to the end and welcome if you're new around here. I hope you will consider hitting that subscribe button to join our crafty little family. Now, the surprise for this haul is not that I went out and bought more supplies, but it's where I found them. Now, in our little town, we do not have a lot of shopping options available, but we do have a Dollar General. So I do go in there often to see if there's anything that I can't live without. I generally do not pick up any of the craft supplies that they have there because they're pretty basic, non-branded, uh, just kind of generic -y kind of supplies. But when I checked yesterday, they have a whole new section added on. And this section was brand name craft supplies. American crafts to be exact. And so I had a lot of fun checking out all of the different supplies that they had available. It really gave me a Tuesday morning kind of vibes and I'm not 100% sure, I can't say confidently that it is where some of the brands will sell their overstock now that many of the Tuesday mornings are closing, but I suspect that will be happening. And good for you, Dollar General, because for a lot of people, they don't have access to the bigger stores. So the variety there was a little bit random. And so that also reminded me of Tuesday morning. It's not like a place where you would go in like Michael's or Joann's and say, I'm looking for something specific and find it. It's more where you'll go and have a happy surprise where uh, you might find something you weren't looking for and then you found it. So they had a couple paper pads here. Once again, this is American Craft, so that's a good brand. Um, and they had a variety of sizes as well. So some were 12 by 12, some were six by eight, and they also had six by six. I just picked up this one because I wanted to test the quality of the paper. I think it is pretty good for single-sided paper and it has a really nice print quality. So the images are nice and vivid and clear and the colors are vibrant. So I was pretty happy about that. And they did have a couple of different choices amongst the different sizes as well. So if you had uh, problems working with the larger patterns, you might want to pick a smaller pad for cards or something of a similar size, but they did have that. So I did pick up one of those paper pads and I think this is pretty good for uh, the change of season coming up. I need things to be a little bit brighter and a little bit fresher. So I like this one. You can see on the cover here, I'm not gonna flip the pages, but there's a variety of geometrics with florals. And so this was a fun pad to pick up. They also had some thickers, which if you are like me and you do any kind of journaling, you would enjoy having these nice uh, glittery letters to add for your titles. These were a good value as well. I think these were $2. The paper pad for this size was five, but I think that's comparable to what you would be paying at Tuesday morning. Now they didn't have like the actual collections with uh, stickers and the cut aparts, but the paper pad selection was pretty good. The thickers, they only came in white, but that's pretty typical um, of an off-brand store, I think, and that was a good selection. And I always pick up extra because I run out of vowels very quickly and also numbers. So I picked up a pack of three paint brushes. This was not American Craft, but I have a need for this one coming up soon, and you'll be seeing that in the video as well. So I figured for the price, it was pretty good to get a brand new set so that I wouldn't be having to use an older brush set. And so I continued to look through. I didn't pick up one of everything, obviously, because that's how hoarding happens, uh, but I did pick up a couple of additional items. These little bags are cute and I have plans for them. They had them in a craft and a white, so I got those. They also had a stack of banner shapes with some twine. I didn't look on the inside. I might not have picked this one if I had. Um, this seemed to be kind of a uh, teal or 
a mint color, but on the inside it is definitely not that color, but that's okay. I'll find a use for it. Another thing that I got were some packs of cards with envelopes. So they had black and white available. I picked up some of each and this size is a A7. And so this is a pretty generous size and you're gonna see later on as we work through the video what I'm going to do with them. And I'm pretty excited to see these black ones. I did look for something similar before I was planning on our Halloween series this uh, past year and I couldn't find them anywhere. Even Hobby Lobby, my daughter-in-law took me to Hobby Lobby when we went to Kansas to see them and I couldn't find this at all. So I'm pretty excited to have these. These are a pack of six by the way, and they were $3 each. I think that's a pretty good deal. There's a couple other things that I got that were not American Crafts, but they have expanded on their school supplies or stationary office kind of items in. So I just picked up a couple of these little notebooks. They have the elastic on the back with grid paper. And I really liked the spiral on this being kind of a gold color and I'm gonna finish this in a future video so be on the lookout for that. I got two because I like both of these colors. We're of course gonna cover the cassette image but I think this is going to be a fun little quick project to work on. So that's it for my haul and I am not sure how long that new section has been there. I've not been to the Dollar General in just a bit um, but I will go back frequently now just to see if they've added anything on. I've got a couple of pictures that I'm going to add uh, just so that you could see kind of how the layout is. It reminds me of Tuesday morning. And then they also seem to have a new uh, set of pens and markers and a whole section of that. I didn't really look too closely at that because that's a whole nother rabbit hole for a different day. Um, and so maybe when I go back, I'll check those out a little bit more. Um, definitely I did see gel pens. So something that would be good for uh, people who do journaling and that type of thing. And if I can, I will include those pictures so you can see how they have the variety set up and maybe something that will interest you uh, to go check it out. So this was at the Dollar General and I'm gonna work today with the package of cards with envelopes. So here's our finished book and I just wanted to show you that we're going to achieve a layered or staggered page effect with this one set of cards and envelopes and I'm going to share it with a spiral binding but for the purpose of the tutorial I will also be showing how to get that measured and punched so that you can add rings because I know some people like to do it that way as well. For our project we are only adding green cardstock as a border and then of course that spiral binding and the paper from that American Craft paper pad. So you may be asking yourself if I have an entire cabinet full of paper and card stuck why have I gone out to buy some additional cards with envelopes and I'll tell you that is because I can achieve nice finished clean crisp edges all the way around without seams on the outside with very minimal effort and a lot of the cutting is already done for me because these are all going to be a standard size. So I think the value in picking that card setup is how much time it will save you and how much additional tape and supplies. So I think it's definitely worth picking up a $3 set to make this a much faster and more fun project. Now those envelopes are going to be five and a quarter 
high and I've cut them down to be six inches wide and that is not including that spiral binding and I've got a couple of pages here in the front that are a little bit narrower and then you can see as I'm going along that we will increase that size and then we can also match our papers so they'll be nicely coordinated i'm going to switch out the scale and the color palette so that you can see how we're going to get a definitely nice layered look and we're also going to be able to include some tip pages or flip pages with the supplies that we have included in that card set so i picked the a variety of geometrics with the floral for this just thought it was kind of fun for summer and so I'm including those and in mixing and matching them I think they coordinate really well and the benefit to a geometric is that it is rarely a cause for being upside down you can kind of cut it and trim it in whatever direction and it will still be uh, correct sometimes if you have words or pictures that have a definite up and down you will notice that if you try to turn your paper and cut it i did want to also include a second set of larger pages for the back so that i can have some additional larger pictures and then i did coordinate that pattern on the back with the front so this is going to be a tutorial today for the base and i'm sharing this as kind of a basic finished book but when I come back next week, I'm going to share how to finish this with the pattern papers. And I will include all of those measurements that you're going to need for the different size pages. And I think we can build on this design as well. So we will include some additional details for the second book next week. So I'm going to start with my cards and envelopes. I'm going to pick four of the envelopes and put the cards directly inside. Not only does that help to build up the bulk, but it does help to make these pages more sturdy. So I'll just tuck that in and I'm going to seal that up. Rather than using my double-sided adhesive tape, I'm just going to stick that down with my regular uh, packaging tape or scotch tape and that will be well secured in between the cardstock layers so I'm not worried about this coming up at all but I am saving myself some adhesive cleanup now all of these pages are going to be the same size and we'll trim them down to get that staggered effect but you do not have to do that you could make all of these pages the same width and that would be perfectly fine and a lot easier actually because there will be fewer measurements now i've just got two cards and two envelopes left and we're going to use the cards and one of the envelopes while we are working along so now i want to bring in my guillotine cutter and i do have one that's pretty good and sturdy you'll want that for cutting through all those paper layers I have four layers now in so I want to make sure that this will cut through them all my apologies in advance if you hear that tapping there is a small bird on the window still trying to let me know that the raccoons have cleared out the bird feeders again and so I think it's just trying to get my attention so we are going to reduce our page size by one inch as we move forward and we're cutting the back page first so I do want to line that up on the six inch grid and this one has a grid along with the ruler on the top so that I can keep everything nice and square so like I said the first or the back page is going to be six inches and I'll just clip that off and the portion that is cut is going to go inside the spiral or inside the ring. So the remaining edges will all be nice and crisp and clean and finished. For the next layer, I'm bringing it down to five and just clipping that off. I will continue that process as I work along 
for the next one it's going to be four and then the next one is three so this is going to be kind of a narrower front cover and I'm curious to see how I wind up decorating that because I've not left myself a lot of room for extra details now on the finished project I shared earlier we do have two front pages that are three inches wide so I just flipped that last envelope over so that I could cut and keep my uh, three nice clean finished edges so I'll have those two shorter pages for the front and then we work along as we go backward so the next thing I want to do is bring in those additional cards so I want to have some flip pages and I'm going to cut those to be the height of the envelopes, not just the cards. So I'm going to bring that in and leave my score line at the top and then measure over to five and a quarter. And I'm just going to clip that off now. This book is going to have two flip pages and the one in the back should measure to the width of the second to last page so that's going to be five inches wide and that's basically already the size of the card so i don't need to do anything else to that but i will open that card and line up the score line right on that four and clip off the additional inch on that side so now i can have my binding in the side and the page will still open so I'll tuck that in there and you can see how everything is lining up pretty well now the second one I was working along and I very nearly cut it to be too short and so you'll see me just looking at those measurements and I decided to cut the height first because I already know that the book is five and a quarter and you see I almost cut it at the three line and then it dawned on me that that would be the width of the super narrow front pages and so I did get my ruler out and measure that it is important to measure as many times as it takes to get that right so that you don't waste your supplies I only had two additional extra cards and so I did not want to waste them. Once I realized what I had done, I just adapted that and slid that over to the four. So now I will have this measured to be the width of the second largest page. And I'll open that up, put my score line on the three, and now this will be the correct width. And I'm so happy that I didn't just cut as I was going along without double checking that. So now I have all of those measured correctly and I want to include an additional wide page for the back. I do have one additional envelope and I will scrounge through all of my offcuts there to find the larger remnants of the cards that were inside those envelopes when I cut them. So I will be able to fill in most of that back page with the additional paper layers to make sure that it stays nice and sturdy and a little bit thicker. So I'll just take those out of the offcuts and put them into the envelope. Now it's not going to stretch exactly all the way across but it will add that additional bulk that we're looking for so that will be helpful and so I'll just tuck those in here on one side and tape it up just like we did earlier when we worked on the other pages and I'll be careful to cut from the edge where I know that that card does not extend all the way over if you have additional cardstock in your stash, you could just easily substitute that. But I did want to demonstrate this by just using the 
amount that was in that one package. So remember that our larger page is six inches wide. So I'll just cut that and that will be our final page or the second of those larger back pages, which will be nice if you have a bigger picture to include. So now I want to put rings on rather than having it in a spiral binding and I just cannot be bothered to measure anything correctly. This is the remnants of what I have left. I think that's pretty good. When I come back next week to finish this book, I may come up with a way to use those additional bits to include some pockets. And that's my plan. Um, so now we've got our two narrower pages and then a flip page. And we're going up in size as we go back. Here's another flip page and then our two larger pages in the back. Now for the measuring, I am going to put three rings in and I have just this pretty kind of bronze uh, one inch ring that will be perfect. That was also the size of the spiral for the first project that I shared. So I cut a piece of paper that scrap to be five and a quarter by one inch. And then I scored it at half an inch so that I could get the middle. And then I, I folded it in half and then in half again so that I could have these lines that intersect. I marked that with a pencil. Then I'm gonna come back in with my hole punch and punch right over that so that I know when I stretch this out those lines or those holes will be spaced evenly. So I've forgotten one of that and I can't see without marking it. So I'll just do that really quickly here and mark where those lines intersect. And that will be where I aim my hole punch for the center hole. So as I work along on this, I'm going to hold this in place. If you feel like you want to put a clip on that, you could do that in that way. That would be pretty well secured. I can just hold this and work along to get all those. I find with the crocodile that you want to punch and then twist it a little bit to help get the remaining scrap off of the back. Now for the top one, I am using this template, but for further rows, I will be just using the previous layer so that I make sure everything stays lined up perfectly. So now I'm going to line this up with the next layer and punch along. So I think that I will work through this and I'll just speed that up a little bit and then I can come back at the end and we can finish assembling this book. So now I've added all of those rings and this is pretty much ready to be finished. You can see we have our pages here along with our flip pages. That's why we cut them a little bit shorter. Don't worry about that 
adhesive tape there because it will be covered with our cardstock and our pattern paper. And you can just imagine how nice and thick that's going to be when we add all of those additional paper layers. So this is going to be a really fun project to finish. And so make sure that you come back next week and we will build on this basic base with some additional uh, variety of details so that we can personalize our card and envelope mini even further. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my small haul and our base tutorial. If you did, um, make sure you leave me a big thumbs up and a comment down below. I put a couple of extra videos on the screen that I think you might enjoy. And don't forget to check out the description for links to all of our socials. And that is all. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you're not already, I would love for you to subscribe. As always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.